So on Horizon Weekly today, uh, we are welcoming Minister of Economic Development and Official Languages, Melanie Jolie. Euh, Madame la ministre, toujours un plaisir de vous recevoir à l'hebdomadaire arménien. Toujours, toujours un plaisir de te voir et de voir euh, en fait toute euh, l'équipe arménienne de Horizon Weekly. Bonjour Diana. Oui, bonjour. Donc, euh, on va commencer euh, en parlant un peu de, de l'Arménie euh, oui. et de la présente situation. So, let's talk a little bit about uh, the situation in Armenia has been unstable, very unstable since October of 2020. Uh, it's been about over half a year now. And Minister Jolie, you visited Armenia in 2018, I believe during the Francophone yeah. Summit. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure it's a little bit maybe easier to understand this way that you've actually been in the mm -hmm. region rather than just mm -hmm. hearing about it in the news. Mm -hmm. So November, 2020 marks the end of the war, the signature of the ceasefire agreement between the embarked parties of the conflict and more than 150,000 local Armenians, uh, civilians of Nagorno-Karabakh are forced to deportations and confronted with significant humanitarian challenges. Mm -hmm. In late October, 2020, in the middle of the clashes, Minister of International Development, Karina Gold, and this past May, Global Affairs Canada announced Canada's concern about the effects of the conflict on the local civilian population. Yeah. Now, as a human rights leader inside the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, what can you tell us about the help that Canada is specifically yeah. allocating to the devastated population of Nagorno-Karabakh and Armenia? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Diana, for this question, because I think it's a question that many uh, Armenians in Canada are asking themselves. Uh, 2020 has been very a very, very difficult year for the Armenian community and the entire diaspora, and ob obviously for Armenia itself. Uh, and um, bearing in mind the, uh, uh, the, the fact that civilians um, left uh, nagorno Kabamba and also that the uh, there were clear humanitarian preoccupation on the part of, of uh, United, the United Nations and of course ourselves uh, as Canadians, we decided to, like you were saying, to make sure that we would partner uh, with the Armenian Red Cross to provide funding and also with just the International Red Cross in general, uh, which was the case recently. Uh, we invested, like you were saying, $1 million. So that was the first thing. Second thing is uh, we definitely need to make sure that the OSCE Minsk group um, addresses this issue and that, uh, that any form of political tensions or division in the region be uh, presented and, and, and addressed during uh, the context through that uh, working group, which has many of the important powers uh, sitting on it, um, you know, uh, from, from, you know, from, from obviously Europe, but also uh, Russia, uh, Turkey, and, uh, and, and, and many of the countries that may have stakes in the, uh, in the region. And so that is why we believe that it is the best thing to have, uh, which is a dialogue on this issue. Uh, and as the traditional Canadian um, point of view um, in international relations. We play a role of honest broker. Um, now, um, there's more that we can do as a country to develop our bilateral ties with Armenia. Uh, we definitely want to increase trade, create more you know, commercial relationships in the sense that- Yeah, that's uh, something that you said in Armenia, I remember. Yes, that's it. We can have more investments. This will create more opportunities, more jobs, better jobs, uh, and, and, and improve the quality of life of Armenians, uh, of the Armenian population, which we want them to stay in Armenia and live and have access to uh, a better future. Uh, and also, uh, we are supporting through the Arnold Chan uh, Initiative, um, we're, we're really supporting many projects to support democracy uh, in Armenia, in the region, 
And also there's a, uh, another program we're supporting, which is called a parliamentary center to support also um, everything in line with democracy. Uh, I was fortunate to go to Armenia following the, uh, uh, the revolution. Uh, well, the, you know, it wasn't, a, it was more a quiet revolution. Uh, and there was a, a lot of, um, uh, I think, uh, a lot of optimism after uh, the, 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 what happened when um, Prime Minister Pashinyan uh, became Prime Minister. Uh, of course, there's been a lot happening with COVID, the economic crisis, the war. Uh, so yes. we want to, you know, we, we want to be there for the community to make sure that the community has access to opportunities. Uh, and we want to make sure that we, be, we continue to fight for multilateralism in this world, because we don't believe that um, um, uh, having an approach where uh, we're not able to sit at a, at a table and uh, address the issues uh, diplomatically um, is, is, is actually a viable uh, approach for peace in the region and also in the world. So that would be how uh, we've been addressing this issue. But I, I really think also more needs to be done. So we're working also on, on many other initiatives to support Armenia. During the last weeks uh, of the Artakh War, uh, many yeah. Canadian news outlets, newspapers uh, gathered and published the irrefutable evidence proving that Canadian made hardware was being used on these Turkish advanced drones that were essentially used by the Azeris to kill Armenian civilians in Nagorno-Karabakh. So the L3 Harris Westcam advanced cameras were not part of the arms export ban imposed by the Canadian government against Turkey in late 2019. Mm -hmm. And just not too long ago, the government said that it has credible evidence Canadian technology was diverted to the fighting in Nagorno-Karabakh. Now, Foreign Minister Garneau said, um, in the statement of the cancellation of the arms permit to Turkey, that the use of Canadian technology was not consistent with Canadian foreign policy, nor end use assurance given by Turkey. Now, we understand Turkey is a top NATO ally that has also transferred Syrian jihadists and mercenaries from various transnational terrorist organizations inside the conflict zone, and this according to French and American uh, intelligence. Now, uh, Madam Minister, what are the next steps of the government of Canada in the investigation of these credible evidences of Canadian technology diverted to the fighting in Nagorno-Karabakh? And how do you think the Canadian government uh, can avoid an, arm, an arms control breach like it did back in uh, mm -hmm. October 2020? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Diana. I think it's a, it's a very important question because following the... Um, uh, the media reports regarding the use of Canadian technology on Turkish drones, very quickly I had a conversation with the Minister of Foreign Affairs at the time, um, uh, uh, to really make sure that we would take, be taking a stance against this and that there would be clear uh, uh, research and, and inquiry that would be made to see whether that would be had been the case. Um, and following that, there was some research that was done through global affairs. And, and at the time, all permits were suspended uh, until the conclusion of the inquiry. Uh, when Minister Garneau became Minister of Foreign Affairs, um, uh, the report was uh, then given to the minister regarding uh, the fact that Therefore, there was a conclusion that it was the case that the uh, Canadian technology had been used. And that's why uh, we decided not only to uh, make sure that, uh, well, we decided to cancel all permits that were already suspended. Um, so that was our way to make sure we would have, we would move fast, but also based on facts. Um, and um, we also decided to address the issue with Turkey directly 
uh, to make sure that that was not going to happen again. And we will have, uh, you know, we have now really good mechanism to make sure that we are not providing export permits that would afterwards be used in a conflict such as the Nagorno Karabakh conflict. So that is what we have done. Uh, we always have to be better in this context, uh, but we, you know, we need to make sure that as we're much more aware of the situation now, uh, we are really, uh, really working hard on making sure that the uh, export permits situation uh, doesn't uh, entail uh, situations like we've seen in Nagorno-Karabakh. Um, so to... Meanwhile, Diana, I must say, you know, my answer was quite, um, how can I say, diplomatic and, and based on a lot of, uh, you know, we're talking about expert permits and we're talking about bureaucratic measures. But at the end of the day, people died in this, con in this conflict. And the Canadian government... Uh, the Canadian, I remember if... I don't know if there was more than one, but I know a Canadian also lost his life. Uh, so, uh, in Toronto. you know, the idea is definitely for Canada to make sure that uh, we appease conflicts in this world. That's what we have done. That's why also so many Armenians decided uh, to uh, come and, and, and live here. And so we need to make sure also that we uh, don't participate in any forms of uh, conflicts through the decisions that we are taking that indirectly would have an impact uh, on civilians. And that's why we took this inquiry very, very seriously. And we will continue to do so because um, it is important for the stability uh, of the um, of the region that uh, we uh, we look into the issue of expert permits very 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 closely. What was there? Can you maybe say in a, in a few words? Because now that you're mentioning that again, uh, what was there? I mean, diplomatically, if you must answer, of course. What was there like an initial reaction to that from the Turkish side, saying you know this export ban and well. Um, I, I, I'm not the Minister of Foreign Affairs, so I, I'm not privy to that uh, reaction. But what I can say is, yes, Turkey is, a, is part of NATO, uh, but at the same time, we have, uh, we have uh, part the civilian population around the world and particularly the Armenian one. Uh, and as a minister that represents, uh, well, that, as an MP that represents an important Armenian population, as a minister, also I had uh, been to Armenia, and I know how much the situation uh, can become very fragile, particularly in times of crisis. Uh, well, we need to be aware, and we need to uh, actually uh, have our eyes wide open. That's what I would say. Changeons un peu de sujet maintenant à notre nouvelle réalité, si je pourrais dire. Euh, depuis plus d'un an, euh, nous sommes en train de vivre une crise euh, complète euh, de santé publique, une crise euh, économique mondiale. Mm -hmm. Et depuis le premier jour de cette crise, le gouvernement a rapidement agi pour fournir un soutien, euh, un soutien rapide aux Canadiens, euh, que ce soit la prestation canadienne d'urgence, la subvention salariale d'urgence du Canada ou d'autres mesures de soutien aux entreprises. Euh, quelle est la performance économique du Canada après un an de cette crise historique? Mm -hmm. Bien, en fait, on sait, euh, la, le, le, le marché de l'emploi euh, va un peu mieux qu'il y a un an. Euh, le taux de chômage est plus bas qu'il y a un an. Euh, mais il y a encore beaucoup de personnes qui ont perdu leur emploi. Et il y a encore euh, un million d'emplois que l'on doit combler. Euh, que, parce qu'il y a des personnes qui... Euh, euh, avaient un emploi avant la COVID qui ne l'ont pas retrouvé. Alors, euh, on doit s'assurer d'être là pour les entreprises et puis les gens partout à travers le pays. On l'a été depuis le début avec les différentes mesures que tu as mentionnées, Diana. Euh, mais aussi, on sait très bien que dans certains secteurs d'activité, à cause des mesures sanitaires, c'est plus difficile. Donc, 
le tourisme, tout ce qui est en lien avec la restauration, l'hôtellerie, euh, le secteur euh, de, des services, l'aérien, le secteur aérien, l'aérospatial. Donc, étant donné que ces secteurs-là d'activité sont encore très, très affectés, ce qu'on veut faire et ce qu'on fait, en fait, c'est qu'on continue plusieurs des mesures jusqu'au mois de septembre, le moment où on s'attend à ce que les Canadiens aient reçu deux doses et donc soient complètement vaccinés et donc réouverture complète de l'économie. Euh, donc, ça, c'est nos mesures d'appui de, 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 aux entreprises et oui. d'appui à l'emploi sont liées au calendrier de vaccination. Mais aussi, on arrive avec du soutien, surtout via les agences de développement économique dont je m'occupe, euh, qui, euh, dans le, le but, va être de pouvoir de, offrir des, des subventions et des prêts sans intérêt à des entreprises et des organisations dans le domaine touristique, dans le domaine de l'aérospatial et pour les petites entreprises. Donc, je vais avoir plus de bonnes nouvelles à donner dans les prochaines semaines. Ça, ça va bien aller. Mais je pense que ce que mon message à tous, c'est faites-vous vacciner. C'est ce qui peut faire le plus de différence dans votre vie, dans la vie de votre famille. Euh, dans la vie, euh, dans le fond, de Montréal et, et partout à travers le pays. Puis c'est ça qui va nous permettre de réouvrir euh, plusieurs, plusieurs secteurs d'économie et donc nécessairement offrir plusieurs emplois partout à travers le pays. On a, je crois qu'on a hâte euh, que le tourisme reprenne. <rire> oui. Okay, On bien. a toutes des fourmis dans les jambes, Diana. <rire> On compte les jours. Oui. Et comme, je vais vous demander aussi, y a-t-il quelque chose que vous aimeriez ajouter ou nous dire euh, euh, à nos, euh, non seulement à notre auditoire, mais aussi à nos lecteurs euh, et tout ça, euh, que vous voulez ajouter? Vous savez, la communauté arménienne euh, vous aime beaucoup. Beaucoup. Mmh. Ben, C'est réciproque, hein, parce que moi aussi, <rire> j'aime beaucoup la communauté arménienne. Je suis un, petit peu, je suis un peu un Mélanienne Joliane. Oh, donc, wow. La députée arménienne de cœur, <rire> pas de sang, mais de cœur. <rire> <rire> euh, ben, moi, ce que je dirais aux membres de la communauté à un SIC euh, Cartierville et un peu partout à travers euh, le Québec, le pays, ben, j'ai hâte de vous voir. J'espère que vous allez bien. J'espère que votre santé se porte bien. Euh, puis, je suis confiante qu'au cours des prochains mois, on va pouvoir recommencer à avoir nos discussions, euh, dans le fond, euh, de, 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 de pouvoir se voir euh, dans une même salle, euh, en tête à tête. Euh, oh. Puis, oui, c'est ça. <rire> Euh, éventuellement, je l'espère, sans masque, euh, mais on y est presque, il y a de la lumière au bout du tunnel. Et puis, euh, le plus important, c'est qu'entre-temps, prenez soin de vous et, et euh, prenez soin de votre santé et celle de vos proches. On est presque rendu là. Et un ou deux mots en arménien, est-ce que vous vous rappelez toujours de vos ah! <rire> <Stick> arméniens? <rire> um, <rire> je dois le pratiquer, Diana, je dois le pratiquer, là. Fait que, paref. Euh, <rire> J'ai bien hâte de faire la carmesse. Je ne pense pas que ça sera possible nécessairement euh, cette année. Je ne sais pas qu'est-ce que les organisateurs ont encore prévu. Euh, mais sinon, euh, je vais certainement passer au centre communautaire puis euh, manger euh, quelques borek, euh, manger, euh, <rire> manger un petit peu de bouffe arménienne. Ça me manque un petit peu. <rire> mais j'espère. J'espère de vous revoir dans la communauté et j'espère aussi, lorsque la situation le permettra euh, et le calme viendra, que vous pourriez encore visiter encore une fois l'Arménie. Ben oui, oui, vraiment. Ça me ferait vraiment, vraiment plaisir. Et j'espère qu'à ce moment-là, je pourrai amener mon conjoint parce qu'il ne l'a toujours pas vu puis j'y en parle souvent. <rire> Merci tout le monde. Merci Au beaucoup. plaisir. Prenez soin de vous. Bye, Diana. Merci encore.